Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another mission of Let's Play IL-2 Semovic Iron Man. Today, we have finally returned to service after being wounded um, and being in hospital for about a month or so. We have now rejoined the Battle of Britain at its second phase. The Canal Kampf, as the Germans put it, is over. The Channel Battles are over and um, now the Germans are actually targeting our airfields in an attempt to wipe out the RAF and pave the way for Operation Sea Lion, where they're going to try and get troops across the Channel and invade England, which, of course, we want to stop, if at all possible. So, what we're doing today, because we've been promoted to Flying Officer, um, we are now leading Yellow Section of our squadron. Um, we're now in charge of Yellow Section. Pilot Officer Fraser will once, be, once again be flying on our wing. Um... And we'll be joined by Sterling and Sergeantson. Sergeantson is also a flying officer, but for whatever reason, probably because I've got so many bloody kills, I've been put in charge anyway. Um, so yeah, that we'll be in charge of these guys. It's our responsibility to you know get them home safely. Um, but the the good side of this is, is we can now boss them around and tell them what to do, which means that we might be actually a bit more likely to get everybody home safely. Um, but we'll see. Uh, we are going to be flying alongside Red Section, commanded by Wing Commander Bloom. So the actual Wingco himself has come out to uh, do this mission today. He's flying with Hugh Langridge and Stuart. And uh, yeah, so we're going to just sort of get on with it, I guess. Uh, we're going to be flying at 20,000 feet, apparently. Uh, our, our distance to target, however, is only 16 nautical miles. So God knows how we're going to actually manage to climb up to 20,000 by the time we get there. Um, but we'll see. The idea is we're going to be patrolling the area around West Mauling because apparently West Mauling has been, been given a mauling recently and it's our job to patrol the airspace around Maidstone and uh, see if we can intercept any Germans coming to bomb West Mauling. Um, personally, I, I feel this is a bit of an odd place to patrol. You'd really want to be doing it a bit further out because even if we're patrolling... Even if we do manage to find these bombers, I doubt we'll be able to shoot them down before they actually drop their bombs on West Mauling. But hey, it's uh, it's just the orders. Got to follow them. Um, so yeah. Of course, if we want to, naturally, uh, now we're in charge of our own section. We don't actually have to follow the orders of Wing Commander Bloom per se in this mission. He won't be issuing us any orders. He'll just be expecting us to take care of ourselves like the big grown-up boys that we are. Um, so I could, in theory, if I wanted to, say, sod the mission objectives and fly a bit further over this way and try and intercept them as they come across this way. However, that would leave us without the support of these four here, so I'm probably going to stick fairly close to these guys regardless. Since there's eight of us going up there, that means there's probably going to be a heck of a lot of Germans on their way. Um, I've been doing some reading, actually, on the subject of the RAF and the Second World War, and certainly during the Siege of Malta, uh, and I believe it was fairly similar during the Battle of Britain. The the, the, the ridiculous amounts we've been outnumbered so far um, in this campaign is historically accurate. That did in fact happen, um, especially during the Siege of Malta. You would regularly see four Spitfires going up against around 20 109s as a regular kind of ordinary thing. Um, unfortunately, in real life, the survival rate of said Spitfires was actually a good deal higher than it is in this game. <laughs> so, unfortunately... Um, while we have these historically accurate numbers, our pilots aren't really performing as historically accurately as they could be. Um, it's fairly obvious just when you see the AI flying around after I'm looking around at them after I've crashed or whatever. Um, specifically, last mission, I think, when our, our squadron leader got his ass blown up because he didn't brake turn away from a BF 110 that was on his tail um, when he should have done. He just kept doing this sort of spirally barrel roll nonsense which got him killed. Um, because if you get a 109 or a 110 on your tail, just brake turn. That, that gets them off you. Um, it's easy and it, it works, and that's what the pilots did in real life. But the AI in this game, sadly, is not programmed to fly its aircraft historically accurately. Um, it just flies them the way the AI ge is just generally programmed to. Um, so never mind. It's an old game, though, to be fair, so you know you can only expect so much from it. But anyway, enough babbling. We do still have... Our trusty Spitfire Mark 1, we've not been issued any new aircraft yet. Um, if we survive to the next phase of the battle, I believe we will be given our Spitfire Mark 2s finally. Um, which are slightly improved over the original Mark 1s. Um, 
which we've been playing thus far. Uh, however, because I'm in charge of yellow section now, I get to choose weapon loadout. Unfortunately, this bit only has the choice of default and empty, so there's nothing to choose from there, per se. Um, we also get the choice of fuel quantity, which is actually kind of a big deal, because um, the less fuel you have in your aircraft, the lighter and more nimble it is, and the better performance it has. But obviously, the less fuel you've got, the longer, uh, sorry, the shorter you are able to stay in the air. Uh, and I've, I've decided I'm going to set this to about 70% fuel, because we've got a very short trip. I could even set it lower than this. I think almost 50% fuel might actually be alright with this, actually, considering it's such, it's such a small distance. Um, in fact, you know what, we're just going to do it as a bit of a test run to see how we get on with 50% fuel. I was thinking 70% to allow us to sort of potentially chase a few Huns away. Um, in uh, to long distance, but um, I, I kind of also get the feeling maybe we won't be in the air that long anyway. So, since we're only going 16 miles, we might as well go 50% fuel, which will improve our flight performance somewhat. Um, and uh, yeah, and it should give us enough fuel for a fair bit of combat and enough to get home as well. So, weapon convergence is again still on 150 meters. That's probably even a bit much, actually, um, or possibly too little. Um, when I'm playing Cliffs of Dover, I normally put my weapon convergence on 150 yards. And I... my 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 brain fails to kind of compute yards into meters. I can't remember which is longer or shorter. I believe yards are slightly longer than meters. Which means that if I, if I put this around, say, maybe 170 or just leave it at 200, I don't know. Let's try 170. That might equate to roughly around 150 yards, who knows. Um... We'll give it a try, um, but that, that that convergence is working out quite nicely for us. So anyway, let's do this. Let's go and um, hope for the best. This just as soon as it loads in, which may take a little while. This map's kind of crowded, to be fair. It's a good map though, I will admit. It's a very accurate one, considering it's completely modded. The original IL-2 did not ship with a Battle of Britain map at all, so this is a completely fan-made creation we're flying around on top of at the minute and uh, considering that I'm pretty impressed with it actually because it's better it's of better quality than some of the original maps in the game so you know I say fair enough to the map maker on that count so all right here we go here we go here we go okie dokie right so on the ground. I've adjusted my track IR settings so that it's a little more sensitive so I can actually lean back and look behind me and lean up and from side to side and whatnot. A little bit easier than I could before. Um, let's get our engine started. Luckily I don't believe this game actually has any kind of... This game doesn't... Um have a very advanced engine management system in place in the same way that Cliffs of Dover does. So I don't have to do things like open the fuel cock, which you can just see down there. Flip the magnetos and so on and so forth. I just have to hit the I button and it'll start everything up for me, which I guess is nice. I don't believe I have to wait for the engine to warm up either. Um... In, normally, in a, in a real Spitfire, you would wait for the engine to warm up to about 40 degrees oil temperature before you actually got going um, but we don't in this game these guys are cheating again using their flaps at positions that the Spitfire can't actually do because the Spitfire just has an up and down position it doesn't have anything in between it doesn't use an incremental sort of hydraulic switch like they say the hurricane does speaking of which do we have any with us we do have three hurricanes. That's a bit of an old number, but fine. I'm guessing their their job's going to be to go after the bombers. We'll see how successful they actually are. Um, it's hard to get going, I think. If I can just sort of keep track of where the runway is because of this dodgy texture. <laughs> I've complained enough about that, I think. Um, airborne around about now, I think. Yep, there we go. Let's keep going, make sure we're actually in the air before we put our wheels up. There we go. 
Make sure the crop pitch is all the way up for takeoff. We can lower it once we get into uh, a sort of cruising speed. Although we're going to be doing a lot of climbing, so I might just leave it on 100%. Um, again, I, I have, still haven't done those tutorials I was talking about, but I will do soon, and I, in one of those I'm going to explain how the prop pitch works, and what it actually does, and what settings you should use. So... Alright, Isle Gas should be following up behind us now. Red Flight has already gone ahead. That's that, and that's red section. Um, I'm actually going to reduce throttle. And go into a sort of shallow bank left. Oh, the Polish are back. Excellent. <laughs> so they don't all get shot down this time. Um, yep, going to go left banking turn, which should allow our other wingmen to cut the corner, basically and catch up with this, which it seems they are doing fairly well. Right. See, I have, having, I've not done this before, but uh, that's because I've never led a section before. Uh, the responsibilities of command, folks. Actually gonna lower my prop pitch a bit to 80% before we start climbing. I've learned a lot, actually. Um, he, he famous last words, I know, I'll probably get shot down now or something, but... Because uh, AI in this game is still pretty brutal, I have to be honest. Um, but I've been playing lots of Cliffs of Dover um, online against human opponents, actually, very uh, recently. Um, it's become a sort of evening ritual for me now. I, I play that quite often. Um, and I've learned a lot in doing that, actually. Not only about the about different planes, about how they work, about things like prop pitch, um, fuel mixture, um, even the geography of southern England, actually, if you can believe it. Um, right. And so hopefully, having learnt all this stuff... I might actually, we might, we might fare a bit better in our, um, in our endeavours in this game. Um, but we'll see. Yep, they're catching up. Not terrifically fast, but they're catching up. Let's lower down to 50%. Lower the prop pitch as well. 70. Come on, fellas. Time to catch up. Right then. That looks like the rest of... I, right, that's not Red Circle, that's actually the Hurricanes. I believe they're the Polish Hurricanes. I can't remember what their squadron number was, but someone managed to point it out in the comments previously. Thank you to that fellow. Let's see. Yeah, I do have my old little GPS map here to tell me where I need to be going, thankfully. Um, I can probably navigate without that, actually, um, because when you play Cliffs of Dover, you don't have a GPS map thingy like that um, to tell you where you're going and stuff, so I've gotten used to navigating without it, to be fair, but uh, we'll keep it on for now. I'm going to go 100% prop pitch, 100% throttle, I'm going to open the radiator and we're going to start climbing like a madman. Forty miles per hour equates to about two hundred thirty kilometers. As you can see on the speed bar, also gotten used to reading the instruments because you have to do that when you play Cliffs of Dover as well. You don't get a speed bar in the bottom left like you do in this game. Holding around one hundred forty miles an hour or one hundred sixty miles an hour, somewhere between there is actually pretty good as a climb speed for the Spitfire. Looks like yep, everyone's caught up. Good stuff. So let's just let's go to the left slightly. That look, yeah, that's Maidstone down there, I think, on the river. That's, whoa, wrong, wrong zoom. Yep, there it is, that's the river. That's Maidstone. So we're going to be flying above that, essentially. Again, I'm not really worrying about keeping on 
the Winko's tail here at the minute because we're, we're kind of our own flight. We can do our own thing if we want to, but I'd like to stay here in this area just because that way we know we can call on Red Section for help, so. Hello, chaps. Yep, looks like everyone everyone's here. Yellow 4 appears to be lagging behind a tad. Um, what's your altitude at the minute? Around 10,000 feet, I think. Difficult to say. I have trouble reading these dials, I'm afraid. Yeah, we're just coming up to 10,000 feet now. Um, so we're about halfway there, because we need to get to 20,000, apparently. Um, never mind. There's Maidstone. I'm going to make a left turn, I think, here. And this will be it for now, I think, until the Germans show up. We're just, yep, that's West Morling down there. We're just going to be patrolling around. Um, what it can show you, I suppose, for now is that we can now do some things. Let's see. Um, it says white flight there, I believe, because it, it's using, I think, Russian um, section colors. Because the game is Russian, and originally it was just Germans and Russians in this game. You couldn't fly anyone else. But this, when I hit white flight, I'm actually, that should actually be yellow section. So... Let's say, I can tell them to attack fighters, bombers, attack my target, target all, cover me, all that sort of stuff. Let's go with tactical. Let's go with... Formation tightness is pretty good. Historically, the RAF, at the beginning of the battle, actually used to fly in very close formation, which was a very stupid move, actually, because that meant that people were concentrating too much on trying to stay in formation and not enough on actually spotting targets. So I will leave this fairly loose like it is now. However, I'm going to change formation to finger four. Now we should be able to see these guys changing position in the formation, which they are doing. Excellent. There we go. Finger 4 is a pretty good formation. It was originally a German one, but the RAF adopted it as well, um, eventually. And basically the way it works is, if you if you look at your, your hand, and you imagine each of your um, fingertips, if you hold out your hand in front of you, basically, and um, keep all your fingers together, uh, and you, you look at your four fingertips, imagine each of those is an aircraft. So you've got this sort of lopsided V um, shape, where you've got one, you've got the leader in the middle, and you've got one on his left and two on his right, or two on his left in this case. Yeah, uh, yep, there we go. Now the idea here is that the tail in Charlie, the guy at the back, in this case yellow four over there, and the just yeah, just behind me there. Um, his job is to keep an eye on everyone else in the formation's um, six o'clock. He's, he's basically an eye, keeping an eye on our tails to make sure no one's diving in on us. And the reason this formation's pretty good is because he's at the back there, which means it's very easy for him. He's at the back and he's on one side, which means he only has to look in one direction, sort of this direction for him, to be able to see everybody. He doesn't have to keep swiveling around and looking in different directions to make sure he's A, in formation, and B, checking on people's six. Um, so there you go, bit of trivia for you. Not that it makes much difference because the AI, um, <laughs> it's not gonna, not gonna help me much in this, in this unless I deliberately tell the wingman to cover me, which I probably will do. But even then, they're a bit useless sometimes. And looks like we've strayed a bit too far away from our target here. Yep. Wow, it's such a short bloody distance. It's difficult to say, isn't it? Sometimes. Let's have a look at how's fuel doing. We've got. I'd say maybe around a third of a tank left, but that should be okay. We're gonna, I think we want to reduce throttle though. Uh, reduce prop pitch, there we go. We're at 
let's see, around 18,000 feet, I think. That's good enough for me. Close enough to 20,000, I think. We'll stop climbing now and we'll just cruise. And now I've reduced throttle and prop pitch, that will actually reduce our fuel consumption considerably. So let's just keep flying this way and see what we find. In fact, I think I will probably... Let's just, I'll just trim the aircraft out a bit. There we go. And I will probably come back once we've found something, so ta-ta for now, folks. Alright, we've just had the call out for enemies, and yeah, sure enough, there they are. Didn't have to do much locating there, did I? Um, Alright then, well, wingman cover me. Flight, flight, yeah, attack flight is wingman cover me. Let's get him. Looks like red section have already gone in for the kill. Might as well join him. Although I do want to make sure there's no one, no other visitors up at this altitude coming to say hello. It's the bombers here, but hopefully the hurricane should deal with them. That's their job, after all. Let's. Is that you? You're kind of isolated from the rest of your friends, aren't you? wasn't very successful, but never mind. Come back around after him again. See if we can try our luck this time. Oh boy. Whoa! There he goes. Let's see if we can bounce him again. Come on, come on, just a little bit further. Oh, very nice hits. Be surprised if he survives that. Right. Still with me? Wingman? Fraser? That's his name. Right, the bombers are up there. We've got all fighters over here. They're disengaged slightly, I think. This must be Fra I think this might be Fraser here, trying to rejoin with us. Uh, you know what, all of White Flight... Uh, rejoin. If you can. Hello there. So this guy might have been... trying to get on our six, possibly. No, looks like he's going for this fella. Oh god, they're everywhere now. Jesus. Let's see. Enemy aircraft destroyed. Alright, that guy we shot earlier went down, that's for certain. Thought he might after that riddling we gave him. Alright, that guy's dived down. Let's not worry about him. Let's worry about the ones that are above us still. Like this guy, for instance. Or these. Oh, hello. Looks like he's trying to come back up. Well, we'll see about that, shall we? Ah, never mind. One of his friends got to me first.
Oh, god damn it. No serious damage yet. Oh! Yeah, get off me! Good lord! Right, I'm out of here. Help! I my wings are still here. Looks like. Just. Where's the nearest airfield? Oh, get off me! You've had your fun. I'm leaving. No, he's overshot. Right. Oh, are you going to fly into my guns? No, not quite. I, wouldn't, I couldn't possibly be that lucky, I don't think. Alright, nearest airfield should be over here, I think. If we get to West Morning and maybe try and put this down. So we picked up another wound, though. Good grief. Screen's all pink. Oh god, here we come again. Giving so much right rudder now just to try and stay in the air with this damaged wing. Oh yeah, he wants my blood big time. I don't know what he's got against me. Maybe I shot down his friend earlier. Where is this sodding airfield? On the bright side, hopefully I'm going slow enough for him to overshoot me. Great, now I'm over a forest. That's not what I wanted at all. There's the airfield, right, okay. Gear down. Flaps open. Let's see if we can do this. Okay, that's not the airfield I'm headed towards right now, that's something else entirely. You know what, fuck it, gear up. I'm not gonna risk it. Whew. Mission complete. Oh dear. Oh crap, get out, get out, get out. Oh yeah, that was a very damaged wing. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's have a look. Yeah, it looks like I was missing a wing tip or something. Which might explain why it was so bloody difficult to control. Yeah, it probably does. Yeah, I'm missing an aileron, missing a wing tip. Yeah, this son of a bitch decided he would strafe my plane. Luckily, I got out in time. What an asshole. Um, yeah. That was, that we were, we were seriously goddamn lucky to survive that. Look at the tail. Good God. Uh, oops. Pilot despawned or screwed up the camera, but yeah, look at that tail. That wasn't fun. Well, anyway, I'm going to straight up quit. Instead of waiting around for ages, we'll just see what happened off the bat. Yeah, there's a lot more red than blue on this map, isn't there, as usual. Uh, hurricane shot down, hurricane shot down, player bailed out. Fraser was shot down, but he bailed out, good. Hurricane Sterling was killed. Sergeantson was killed. Christ. Okay, so two of two half our fucking flight was uh, shot down and killed. Then that's great. Well, the whole lot of us were, but two of us bailed out in time. Good lord. One and nine. E three. E one. Langridge and Stewart got a shared kill on this E one, and Wing Commander Bloom got this E one as well. Whew. Well, we're alive, I guess. And we got a kill. That 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 much is true as well. But bloody hell, that was that was uh, uh, that was stressful, is what that was. Good lord. So difficult to get off the tail of those guys, especially when they attack you in packs. You know, you just got two or three of them on you at once. You know, and you just can't seem to break turn away from them. I mean, that's the thing I've noticed playing this game, um, compared to Cliffs of Dover, certainly. I think the 109s in this game actually turn a bit better than they really should, uh, and certainly did in real life. Because if you look at, if you if you look at pilot memoirs, you know, like diaries written by the pilots themselves and interviews with them years after the Spitfire pilot, certainly, they would always say, you know, if I got a 109 on my six, I would just break turn away because the 109 couldn't keep up with you in a turn. 
But uh, in this game, they totally can, I think, as we've I've demonstrated numerous times previously. Or I brake turned as far, hard as I could, and the guy just stuck with me the whole way through it. So that kind of annoys me, really. For, in fact, it annoys, annoys me a lot. Um, but I guess I'm just going to have to deal with it. Um, try and... Uh, work around it, um, forcing overshoots in different ways through barrel rolls and things might, might, might be something I have to work on because apparently brake turning is not going to do it or at least I'm, or maybe I'm just brake turning too late that that could also be it frankly because um, the 109 can certainly keep up with you through the beginning of the turn at least because um, if he has enough speed but yeah <sighs> still it looks like our next mission is we're going to be going back to the same bloody place. Great. Uh, but hey, look, we got ordered a DFC. Look at that. We got a DFC out of that. Pilot profile. Yep, there we go. Distinguished Flying Cross. Overall kills nine now. We're one away from a double ace. That's not bad going. Doesn't look like there's any promotions though, and apparently our wound wasn't uh, bad enough to keep us away from the uh, action <laughs> for very long. So, must have been pretty minor, whatever it was. Yep, we're going to protect an airfield, 18,000 feet. Same place again. Well, next time then, that's what we're going to be doing, folks. Till then, um, happy flying, and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>